So what is business intelligence? Business intelligence is nothing but each and every company at the end of the day, they want to track their business, how the business is going on. Okay. At the end of the day, they want to track their business. You can take any, uh, any uh, organizations like banking, insurance, automobile industries, uh, healthcare, right? Uh, so any industries, even you can take any software companies also, any manufacturing companies, any small, small companies also, at the end of the day, they want to track their business, how the business is going on. See, this business intelligence tool is meant for business people, like a manager, senior manager, director, VPs, and a CEO, even sometimes CEO. So what is their job? So each and every day, they will analyze the business, okay, how the business is going on. So which product is moving fast, which product is not moving fast. If I'm going to increase uh, some product price, so what could be the impact on the customer's uh, feedback or uh, so what, how the customers is liking the product. Uh, so which product they are liking, which product they are not liking, okay. Which product is having fast movement, which product is not moving fast. Say so sales and profit, all this revenue and uh, whatever we are doing it on the uh, customer, uh, how many customers are there all over the globe. So just we can analyze it, everything, like every custom, every organization at the end of the day, they want to analyze the business. If you take online food delivery app, okay, how this app will be, uh, how they will analyze it, right? See, at the end of the day, okay, how many customers today have they have ordered? Uh, how many delivery partners are delivered by on time? Okay, how many products? 90 percentage, 99 percentage of the delivery has been uh, uh, delivered within the time we have given. Okay, out of which how many of them raised uh, uh, some concerns? Something like that, right? So a lot of analysis they will do, they will improve their business. Okay, this is what the dispute we are getting it. How can we improve it? So what is the uh, sales and everything they will uh, go for it. And end of the day, they will make their reports, right? Settlement reports, lot of uh, they need to set the amount, settle the amount to the vendors and the merchants, different merchants will be there, right? Hotels and everything, they need to settle that. After settlement, they will analyze it. Okay, how many of them are going for cash, how many of them are going for uh, online, okay? Like uh, cash on delivery and then uh, credit card, debit card, Paytm. So different kind of analysis they will do. Then they will go for, okay, these customers are, these many customers are there, regional wise customers. If I have all over the India business, then uh, which region we are having huge uh, uh, customers, okay? Uh, transactions, sales, profit and everything, they will analyze it, right? Then only they can, they can improve their business in next day, next quarter, next year, right? They can project it. So this is what the business intelligence. See, if you are the Java developer, you are developing application for the end users. I'm going to use that. Then you are developing it. But business intelligent developer, you are the ETL developer, Informatica developer, or uh, like a Tableau or Power BI developer, we are working for the business people. Business people, you know, what is by artificial intelligence, right? So artificial intelligence, we are, we are trying to make the mission to think and then take addition. Business intelligence is nothing but we are giving the data to the customer. That is what business people, then they will take addition accordingly. If you look at here, in 1980s, we used to store the data in the database, in the database. We used to store the data in the database for business transactions. At the same time, we will pull the report from the database itself on the same database itself. What will happen if you consider any banking, any banking, whatever we do, ATM transaction, whatever we are going to the bank and then do, do the transaction or online transaction or gateway transactions, whatever the transaction we do, 
all the transaction will happen will store in the database right so it will store in the database at the same time banking manager that particular regional manager branch manager they want to know in our branch what is the today's sales what is the today's deposit so based on their business they will analyze it right what is the today's deposit and uh, withdrawal uh, how much how much is the loans personal loan uh, jewel loans different categories they will analyze it what is the amount we have taken today uh, and then what is the current amount we have see all this analysis we will do so that's what report okay that is what report this is a transaction see if i'm going to do all this in one single database right if the data volume is very high this particular system will get impacted impacted means you are pulling the data for reports at the same time you are storing the data on the same database then what will happen this particular database will get impacted impacted in the sense you will feel very slowness some network slowness right same way here we also will feel some slowness so that's what they have come up with some solution called okay don't take any reports from this database we will create one another database okay we will create separate database for reporting purpose for reporting purpose alone for analysis we will create it nowadays we have the data lake and all right so it's the same concept okay data lake and all it's the same concept for the business analytics we will have the data on the separate database okay whatever the data we are collecting here at the end of the day we will move the data in 90s 90s and all at the end of the day only we will move so one day once we will move the data from year to year so this database we will call it as oltp system oltp so what is meant by oltp oltp is nothing but your online transaction processing online transaction processing your business will be there from different places will be having the different places different applications your data might be coming from sap your data might be coming from uh, salesforce and oracle sql server db2 different different applications right different different places also see all this data whatever the data places we have say for example here one database here one source applications here another source here another source these are all for business day to day business see your payroll information will be there in the sap right general results general ledger crm all this related data will be available in the oltp this is for transaction say for an example if you take ircdc whatever the ticket we are booking right so all the ticket booking and everything will be happening in this oltp only okay then oil what is olt olap olap is nothing but this is what our olap olap is nothing but your online analytical processing whenever we want to do analysis i'll go for the online analytical processing you do all the analytical okay so analytical process in this olap system don't do on oltp see this is what the olap do analysis on the olap system olap means it is a data warehouse what is warehouse meaning warehouse is nothing but it's a place where we will store all the historical things right same way here we used to have the data warehouse initially we used to have the data warehouse nowadays we are moving towards on the data lake see data lake is nothing but more than the volume of data warehouse this data warehouse will handle only structured data structured data in the sense it will have the data only in the table format like how we have the data in the excel sheet right the same way you will have only is table format we will have the data but in data lake we may have the data see not only one single table we have a lot of tables okay thousands of tables will be there not thousand even 10000 more than that also but data will be stored in tables like a structured one this columns and rows but here we have the structured semi structured and unstructured data we can have it on the data lake all our facebook amazon all our data right ola uber swiggy zomato see all this uh, youtube and everything like to store the data we are now we are going with this data lake only that's what the spark will do all this with the processing okay see we 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 need to store the data this is what our business business we are not going to touch this for analysis if i want to analyze my business you should not touch this one you have to analyze all the analysis here only 
data here only, okay? So I have to move the data from here to here, right? I have to copy the data from here to here. So I, every day I have to copy. See, this is what you'll have on this of our OLTP to OLAP. Data lake, as I told, data lake will have structured, okay? It will have all the structured data. So that's what the data lake will have. You have the Azure SQL, right? You have AWS also BigQuery, uh, sorry, GCP, we have the BigQuery. It will have structured, semi-structured, okay? So I'll say short form, semi-structured, and then unstructured data also. That's what it will have, all this. Not only unstructured, it will have all the data. Okay, that's what your data lake can handle it. All the type of data, okay? So this is called your OL APIs. OL AP is nothing but your data lake or data warehouse. We have to move the data from here to here, right? We are the heterogeneous sources. This is called heterogeneous sources. As I told, you might be having the applications from, uh, we may have applications from SAP, right? We have we have the data from SAP, we have the data from Salesforce, okay, Salesforce. And we might be getting the data from a file, file system, flat file. And we might be getting the data from your Oracle, your Oracle and your SQL server. See Microsoft SQL, okay, MS SQL. See all this Microsoft SQL server, or you might be having the data from DB2. See other data sources also, any different data sources, we can get the data. This is called heterogeneous source system. We will take the data from here. Okay, we'll extract the data from here and we have to load the data into this data warehouse. Now we are seeing only structured data. We are not going for any unstructured data in our Informatica. So we're having only structured data. That's what we are going for the tool called Informatica Power Center. So this tool, as I told yesterday, this tool will extract the data from source. It will extract the data from source, transform the data, load the data into the data warehouse on a periodic time, okay, scheduled timing. This process we will call it a CTL process. Extraction, transformation, loading. It's like a postman. Okay, extract, transform, load the data into data warehouse. Okay, load the data into data warehouse. This is the ETL process. Okay, ELT process. What is ELT process? Normally in data lake, we will go for ELT process. Extract the data from here load the data into data lake. After loading it, we will go for the processing. That's what extraction, ingestion, and then processing it. That's ELT process. So we do have different processing type. One is the processing we have batch processing. Okay, batch processing. What is batch processing, right? Batch processing means, see, we will be having a scheduled timing, like one hour once, half an hour once one day once, weekly, monthly jobs will be running. Periodic time, whatever the transaction happened here, periodically it will move the data from here to here for the analysis purpose. For an example, now the time is 8.30. One hour once your job is running, it will process. It should have executed by 8 o'clock, right? 8 o'clock. But now, 8.30, time is 8.30. If you go and check the data in our analytics proper, up to 8 o'clock only data has been refreshed. So when the, now whatever the transaction is happening, right, right, now the timing, it will get reflected at the nine o'clock only, okay, nine o'clock only. So why we have scheduled this ETL process by one hour once. That's what ETL. See, you, you are doing some cancellation and all, you are doing some, some, some transaction, right, in the online process and all. Sometimes you'll, they will say like, it will get reflected after four hours, after one hour, or uh, something like uh, it will get reflected after 12 hours or 24 hours or three days, something, right? See, it's all about ETL process. Okay, it will move the data from multiple applications. It will make an entry, it will get some entry, and then it will go to the other one. That's what it will go for. This is called batch processing. We do have live processing. We have something like you have IoT devices, right? IoT, Internet of Things, IoT devices, or you may have having the data from sensors, or Facebook, Amazon, like this data sources. You have the Kafka, it will read the data. It will have the all the logs it will pitch. And then we have a lot of uh, tools are there. By using that, 
we'll have the spark engine then we will load it into the data lake we have other tools also this is called live processing live processing means we will be seeing the near real time data near real time means see 835 you are seeing 835 data okay that's called live processing it will take live data from here so it's all your iot devices and everything okay it will take the data from here this is called iot or all the devices live processing it will take the data and then here the the spark engine or kafka will be pulling the data and then here it will load the data here you will be processing it ingestion this is called ingest we will say like it's a extract ingest and then you will you will be processing it here we will we will go for the process okay this is called your data lake processing engine that's what your aws your azure okay your gcp all this will do this is called live process we have batch process also in our uh, data lake and all that's what it will have all this structure semi structure and structure also this data warehouse normally we used to have oracle data warehouse or we have the terra data heard about this terra data and all right see so other this is for the data warehouse and all okay we do have something like this is what your terra data terra data it's a first database to handle the terabytes of data so you might be having oracle oracle also warehouse and you might be having sql server microsoft sql server also so these are all some of the data warehouse previously we used to have netisa you are the netisa right all this so in data lake nowadays if you come to this second part you are the you are the microsoft azure right you are the azure we have so azure and you have the amazon aws right we we can store for s3 bucket and all for the data lake and we have something like a gcp google cloud platform and we have we can have this snowflake see these are all the uh, some data lake we have in our real time to store our data and in addition to the storage it will do all the processing and machine learning algorithm all this it will do that's a different part but we will use this one for our business uh, process okay this is what we'll go for the uh, batch processing and live processing all this okay i need to have the tool right here i need to have the tool which tool i can use there are different tools are there that's what our informatica power center will do one of the tool is called informatica power center okay one of the etl tool is called informatica power center see informatica is the company name informatica power center is the tool tool name see the informatica power center is used to for data integration it's integrate the data from here to here it will integrate data integration tool informatica will not store any data in order to load the data from here to here we are going with that's what we are see if you look at um, uh, iactc and all in that class they will not allow you to take the pnr status right why because this is oltp if you if you go and hit oltp in the that class that class is like a more number of users will be accessing it okay if you are go and check in the uh, something like a reports on pnr status and all it's again overhead to the oltp system it may impact on the tatkal booking and all so that's why they are stopping it right same way in business if the business hours is happening business is happening here if you go and hit this database for this analysis purpose it will get impacted that is why we have so you can ask me okay here informatica also is getting this database right and then what will happen that is what we are not going to hit all the data we are going to hit only half an hour data one hour data or one day data maximum and also we will have some replication server we will not directly hit this oltp we will have some replication server here some server it will replicate last 10 days of data here okay whatever the data we are like a mirror server we will see use that uh, mirror server it will mirror the data whatever the data is available last 10 days of data only it will be mirrored we can have last one year of data but only 10 days of data will be there in this layer we will hit this layer only not this layer this layer is for database for business purpose okay clear on this that's what we will have the databases and everything okay so you have loaded here after that from here we will extract the data for our reporting purpose reporting in the sense we do have lot of reporting tools are there so what are the different reporting tools are there in the market we are the tableau 
from salesforce then we have microsoft power bi so we have power bi power business intelligence then we have uh, clickview from clicktech we have the clickview or clicksense so like this we have lot of tools are there from looker from gcp we have the looker uh, gcp in the sense your google we have the looker and we have the quick insight right so from aws we have the quick insight see all these tools are very much used for this reporting purpose okay reporting purpose how we are the informatica power center right same way we do have other tools i will show you okay what are what is these tools i can show the data to the customer in terms of chart and visualization chart by means of chart it's a very easy to understand now okay then where this uh, machine learning algorithm will come into picture artificial intelligence will come into picture see here we are loading the data right we need to feed again data to our customer for the better user experiences so if you go to the amazon they will be giving you the suggestions right okay you buy this product based on your search history they are giving you the suggestions all this right so how they are giving us against your customer id they used to collect all the data they will process it based on that they will processing it again they are feeding back to the source system okay for the recommendations youtube recommendations amazon see lot of uh, lot of application now they started with like a best seller review comments whoever is getting good review then it will be on the top right see lot of filter condition lot of analysis they are giving that right see all this will be we are analyzing it all the data huge volume of data again we are feeding back to the oltp system for our business users okay that front end they will collect the data from here they will use it this is what machine learning algorithm artificial intelligence algorithm will be applied on the database and then data lake and then they are feeding back to the source system again a full stack developer and all they will use it they will use this data lake as the source and then get the data they will develop it see these are all the data warehousing data lake life cycle here if you are going for data lake uh, data center and all you can see this is what the data center so look like it's again huge volume it's not only seeing uh, small volume it's like a huge volume only okay. google cloud we have the these are all the data centers data lake look at here how much is the data lake uh, at all it's alibaba you know right china china alibaba uh, yes. it's like a data center here this is what we, they will have the data lake has lake cooled data center right so google also they have the data lake and everything lake data center it will it is used to store the massive data that's what we have the data center look at here this architecture even we can get the data from ingestion i told right ingestion web tracking all this we will collect even from data warehouse also we will collect okay storage and then data catalog data bricks so that's what it will move the data it will be used in real time these are all the data lake in real time okay data centers we have huge volume it will handle data warehouse again it's huge volume only but when compared to data lake it's very uh, limited one okay if you know this etl pipeline very well informatic and all very well learning this concept is very easy machine learning all this etl machine learning is very easy that's what extraction transformation loading machine learning also we will do deep learning machine learning all this related to our etl process only once we are the etl do that etl data sources etl data warehouse and business intelligence look at here how the architecture will be right as i told we we may get the data from your online resources right your online shopping your mobile your cloud so all this you are collecting the data flat file databases iot devices and everything is data source you do the etl and load it into the data warehouse or elt i told right elt also anal analytics query and reporting you are the business intelligence business intelligence means your tableau power bi all your mobile and everything that's what you will be having all this see logs files and media unstructured unstructured business custom application is a structured one so you are taking that ingestion storing and preparation and training and then you are doing that all the modeling and everything then you are going to the power bi or web application or our front end tool or everything that's what the pipeline of azure and everything okay ingest ingest means extraction okay ingest transform load into a storage then preparation and training preparation means machine learning and all this we will train that 
and then we'll give the data to the applications, front-end applications for the better user experience and all. Okay, so this is what the ETL process we will do. I hope you are clear on this ETL process. So that is what I have explained here. So business intelligence is nothing but each and every company at the end of the day, they want to track their business. So that's what the business intelligence. So each and every, this is the, the business intelligence tool for mainly used for the business people. The business people like manager, senior manager, directors, VPs, and even for CEO also. So they, they used to start their business day-to-day -day activities by analyzing the data. So for this particular business analytics, as a ETL developer, they will load the data into data warehouse or data mart. And then as a report writer, they will present the data in the form of data visualization tool in the form of dashboard or scorecard or different reports. The business people will analyze the data and then they, they will take addition accordingly. Okay, this is what we can go for. This is the process. And this is what the sales we, we got it. And this is the profit. And this is the margin. So a lot of analysis they will do on the data. They will take addition accordingly. So this is what the business intelligence. As a ETL developer, we should know all this concept very clearly. So what is ETL? As I have mentioned, ETL is nothing but extract, transform, and load. So this is what the ETL process. One more time, I will explain. So the left-hand side, you are seeing that heterogeneous source systems. So this is what the heterogeneous source system we have. So like we can get the data from Oracle, SQL Server, DB2. Uh, we even we can get the data from, even we can get the data from the social media, and then we can get the data from any uh, live sensors and all the data we used to collect, extract the data, transform the data, and load the data into a data warehousing layer or data lake. So this process, we will call it as batch processing. So batch processing is nothing, but it will be a scheduled run. So every day it will be scheduled run. It will be, so even for half an hour once, one hour once, the data will be pulled from the source system and then it will be loaded into a different layers like staging layer and multiple layers, intermediate layers, multiple layers, work layers and data mark. So data mark is nothing but a subset of our data values. So this subset is nothing but say for an example, I'm working for merchant reporting, then I'll be having merchant data mark and then supplier data mark, finance data mark, some different, different data marks will be there for the particular subject area. So from this, so for this layer, this is the source and this is the target staging layer. And then staging is nothing but it's a landing zone for our data. So even we have the data from heterogeneous source system, we will land the data into a staging layer. From the staging layer, we will move different work layers. We will apply a lot of business logic here. For this layer, so this is the source and this is the target. Again, for this layer, this is the source and this, this is the target. The data will be moved like this only. So source and target. So all these are ETL process only. This is what data will be moved. So this is like OLTP system. This is like OLAP system. So we used to have a lot of different ETL tools are there in the market. So one of the widely used ETL tool is Informatica Power Center. Then we have in the cloud system, Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services, Microsoft SSIS, SQL Server Integration Service, Oracle Data Integrator, different ETL tools are there in the market. We should know all this concept very clearly whenever we are going for an interview or we are going for a project. So definitely these ETL process will be taken place. And we used to have the live processing or streaming. So nowadays we are working on the data lake. So data lake is nothing but the more than the volume of data warehouse. It can handle structured, semi-structured, unstructured data also. Unstructured data is nothing but our audio file, video file, how we are getting the data in the social media, right? So that the social media content mostly are unstructured data. To, in order to process the unstructured data, the continuously we are getting the data from our source system. This is called live processing, a streaming, like how the water is flowing in the pipeline, right? The same way the data will be flowing 24 cross 7 from the source systems like our IoT devices, like mobile devices or sensors. We might be getting the data continuously and then we are loading the data into a data lake. From the data lake, we will process the data. Again, you can apply some machine learning algorithm or you can apply some artificial intelligence algorithm here. And again, feeding back to the data to a source systems for the something like a recommendations are best seller, something we are doing it some news feed 
So a lot of analysis we are doing on the data and then we are giving the data to a source system. So this is what the ETL process will be, will be there in our day-to-day -day activities. So OLTP is nothing but online transaction processing. To run the business, we used to have the OLTP. In order to analyze the business, I need to have the OLAP system. So OLAP is used to for mainly for the business person. To analyze the business, they will go for the, in order to analyze the business, I need to have the data warehouse or data lake. That's what we can do a lot of analysis on the data. After analyzing it, I'll be taking the decision accordingly. So who is involved in ETL process? So whenever we are going for a real-time project, so first we will be getting the data from a data analyst or the business analyst or the product owner or the business owner or from application owner. So they will be creating the requirements. So we will be getting the requirements from our business analyst or business owners and how the source to target and what are the different business use cases they will be uh, giving us. So based on that, we have to, the ETL developers, they will be doing the ETL development, right? So they will be moving the data from source to target. We have to validate the data. So how the ETL tester move the data, whether it is accurate or not. So what are the defects are there? So we have to raise the defect and then we have to assign it to the ETL developer and the ETL developer need to fix it. So this is what the life cycle will be going off. So once we give the sign off, then only it will be moved to the other environment. Data will be moved to the other environment. The data architect or data modeler, nothing but who builds the data store for us. So it's a data, big data lake or data warehouse or data mark. They're only going to handle it. So if I'm going to do any business, so what are the different tables it should get affected and what are the columns should be maintained, the architect will be maintaining it. As an ETL developer, they'll be moving the data from source to target. As an ETL tester, we have to test whether they have moved all the data correctly. They have implemented all the logic in our ETL process. Our business analyst team, they'll be analyzing this particular reports only. So they'll be coming up some some use cases. Okay, uh, say they want to know if they are we are doing the, some uh, uh, transactions. Transaction is getting declined. Okay, declined. So by the particular customer or by the system automatically some reasons, okay? So we have to analyze why that most of the transactions getting declined. Uh, the business analyst team, they're saying that, okay, 30% of the transaction is happening. It is getting declined in the uh, last stage or some stages it's getting declined. Why it is getting declined? So it's a due to the card issue or the network issue or by, by, the, by the person itself there, declining it. Okay, a lot of reasons will be there, right? Why they are declining it? OTP issue. So a lot of analysis they will do. See, all the analysis they will do and then based on that, to arrest this, they will be giving us some suggestions. Okay, if there is a OTP issue, increase the server capability to deliver the OTP very quickly. Okay, if you are, delay, if you are delay, delaying the OTP like more than three seconds to four seconds, so there is a lot of possibility to decline that particular uh, product, the last stage. So whenever they are they are ready for the transaction, you deliver it to OTP quickly and read uh, OTP and then fill it, complete the transaction within two seconds or three seconds. That's what, okay, that's what you are completing the transaction. Nowadays, they are having the e-wallet, right? So keep it to the wallet inside the particular, uh, first, uh, the particular site itself load uh, some monies before that so you can just one click take the date take the money that's all okay so it's a com completing the transaction very quickly then the customer so most successful transaction will be getting it from the customer right so that's what the business development team they are analyzing it and then they will be giving suggestions to the business team okay if you are going to do this we can improve the business like this then it will be implemented on the OLTP side Okay, the enhancement will be implemented on the OLTP side. Server enhancement, all this. So the OLT, this aggregating the data is nothing but we are integrating data from OLTP to OLAP. So database, data mark, data warehouse. What is data mark? See, data warehouse, we know. What is data warehouse? The data warehouse. So the data mark is nothing but a subset of your data warehouse subset of your data warehouse. It's again logical division. Logical division of this data warehouse. Say for an example, I want to send a merchant report. 
I'll be having merchant data mart. Okay, customer data mart, some supplier data mart. All this data mart will be there, different, different data mart. Based on the access and privileges, we'll be having the different data mart. So from the data mart, we will take the reports. If I'm working for merchant report, only merchant data mart I will have access. Other data mart I will not have access. Okay. So it will have some PAA information, other secured information. That's why for the security purpose, they are splitting the data values into data mark based on your business area. You take the data from this particular small area. Okay, small subject. So that's what data mark will be. Data mark is nothing but subset of our data values. Okay. Okay. So once we have load, we are aggregated the data into the data values. Once we have aggregated, then we will present the data in the form of data visualization, like a reporting, Tableau, Power BI, see all the reporting tool, we will create the reports. So if you are giving the data in this format, it is very easy to them, right? Business people, it is very easy to them to analyze it, right? Then they will take a decision accordingly. Okay, so this is seven, six days of five days of business. Why this business is coming down or last five years, last two years due to COVID some business loss or something like that different. Due to COVID, we are having a lot of uh, transactions. So that's what they will analyze it. They will take addition accordingly. Okay, how to improve the business? So how to improve the business in this particular area? So we have developed uh, these many products. Out of this, this is the product is moving fast. This is the product is not moving. Uh, we do have the stocks in this particular store. We have to move the stocks to another store for the supply and demand. So like this, lot of analysis they will do on the particular business, and then they will take addition. It is not only one particular business team. We do have different teams will be there. Business development team, they will be doing it all the analysis based on their area, and then they will take addition accordingly. They will be feeding back to the source system. We will move the data. Okay. So in order to change anything on the source, they need to get a lot of approvals from the business architect team. Okay. So this is what data warehousing architecture, whatever I have explained so far, this is what the data warehouse architecture. We have the source here, ERP, uh, enterprise resource planning, or all other social media, networking and everything, e-commerce site and everything, structured data, unstructured data, I told, right? It's a real-time data we are pulling, or batch data we are pulling from the source, the data integration layer, all the data profiling, all the data cleansing, we will do it by using some IDQ tool or some layers. So from here, from here, we will consume the data to the, to the data warehousing layer, like a staging layer. And once staging layer completed, we'll go for different layers in enterprise data warehouse. This is called EDW. From here, the data will be moved to data mart. From here, it will be moving to the, all the BI applications. Like you have the Tableau, Power BI, all this mobile applications. And then data will be moved to some front end tool also, on demand services also. So this is what the data warehousing architecture. See data warehouse, the CTL pipeline will, uh, will be there. Okay, even if you are going for new cloud technologies, definitely this data warehousing architecture will be there. So we can move on to the cloud technologies, no issues. Still lot of companies are using Informatica Power Center for their ETL process. See if you take, this is one of the analytics. This is one of the analytics reporting side. Say I'm giving the data. So this is one of the channel analytics. Say for example, for the uh, for whoever is having the channel, we are giving the some analysis here. Okay, these many subscribers for last 28 days, 41 percentage increment. Then these many views, this many watch time. Okay, then this is the day by day how many uploads you have done and what is the views here. So it's very easy to understand, right? For the channel holders, right? So how much is the overview, the viewers, and what is the interest viewers, something like that. See, all this you are giving filter here. Last 28 days, last one day, last one month, right? Or last this particular month, current month. You can go for last quarter, last three months, last year, or from the beginning. See, whatever it may be, they are giving the uh, line chart here, bar chart. See, the numbers they are say, giving. So this is called data visualization, the reporting, okay? They are using different tools to provide the data. It's a near real-time data. See here, it's a latest activity, last 48 hours they are giving. So every one hour, 
the data is changing okay now updating live right so this is called live data update so this number will change often okay 4837 4832 something this number will change okay often it will change this is called streaming the data and then you are showing this one will take the streaming the data but now here we are seeing this one right last 28 days this is not streaming the data this is like your data warehouse data only aggregations this is live data this is aggregation data so in a single page they will go for the scheduled data also and live data also that's what they will be showing them this is what we will go for the data okay so this is the architecture of data warehouse you can see here this is the functional architecture of our data warehouse here we have the crm okay customer relationship management and inventory payroll sales general ledger production all the data we will be collecting from source we will be moving the data into a data warehouse from the warehouse we will be taking different metrics okay so how the customer profitability what is this we are we are having different suppliers how they are performing it okay productivity and strategic performance closed loop marketing product profitability so in real time environment we do have different different metrics all the different different metrics will be collecting from the data warehouse data only okay lot of aggregations will be running the data so you'll be having last three months uh, whenever we are going for any quarter results right the company is going for quarter results they'll be taking all the three months data right all the three months data so if i'm going to take aggregation of all the three months data if i'm going to do that particular calculation in the source system it will get impacted we will not get one consolidated data so payroll will be there in sap okay payroll will be there in sap some different different systems will be there oracle sap uh, different different system will be there it is not a consolidated data but here single place single unit it will give you all our historical data last 10 year i want to know last how last 5 years we are performing based on that we have to speak in the board meeting and all so that we have to take from the data warehouse only okay this is what will be data warehouse environment okay so what is data warehouse as i have explained it's a subject oriented it's nothing but your data mart subject oriented like customer supplier product sales is one subject oriented integrated we are integrating the data from source system to data warehouse integrated time variant all our data are historical perspective like we'll be having information like from day 1 to till date we'll be having all the time variant data and non volatile non volatile in the sense like we will never ever overwrite or delete the data in the data warehouse remember we will never ever overwrite or delete the data in the data warehouse we will just load the data and we will keep the data for historical purpose okay backup we will keep it so if any data change is happening in the source system we will allow to change it if you are if you are going to a bank site and you are changing your address the bank oltp site we will allow them to update your address but in oilap we will have your previous address and this address also will be inserted newly the new address will be marked as active address the previous address will be marked as inactive address so if you take amazon so they will be having all your addresses right whenever you are adding new address they will be keeping and we are going for any uh, check out then they will be giving all suggestion of your address okay which address you want to take these are all business tricks so you, you know every time you are going to type your address it will take lot of time then customer will feel that very bored right so that's why they are already taken the addresses and everything they are giving right everything they are making very easy for the customers to improve their business okay that's what non volatile collection of data to support management decision making process to support management decision making process we are using this data warehouse for the business intelligence i hope you are now you are clear what is business intelligence business intelligence is nothing but at the end of the day i have to make my business in a profitable way okay that's what the business intelligence so i hope you are clear this is the again the modern trend warehouse definition integrated architected and periodic copying data from various heterogeneous sources 
both inside and outside the enterprise into a centralized repository optimized for reporting and analytical processing this is what we are doing for the data warehousing okay data lake also this is what okay why the companies deploying the data warehouse or data lake why because operational system operational system is nothing but your oltp side OLTP are being impacted because of reporting request. So if a customer is asking last three months of data for the reporting purpose, then if you go and hit this operational system, so if you're the backend, huge volume of data it will consume, right? So, you, so Amazon per, per second order is 120 orders per second worldwide, 120 orders per second. Like you think about the volume, the volume, how much volume it will be generated and then uh, one day volume one week volume one month volume one quarter volume how many records will be created one order so how they are handling all the data right see logs and everything how they are handling it so in that particular system if you go and hit this oltp for the reporting purpose you will get impacted right so that's why and also it will not give the oltp cannot have all the historical data we cannot keep all the historical data we will have all the data mining operation, data warehouse operation in the data lake or data warehouse only. So we will not get any consistent data. So that's why, and also it's very expensive to maintain this OLTP system. Okay. Oil AP side or data lake side, we have commodity hardware. We can have the nowadays we have the commodity hardware side, OIL data lake side. So that's why we are going for the data warehouse or data lake. So these two members are called as fathers of data warehousing, Inman and Ralph Kimball. So Inman only the first person has suggested. So instead of having oil TP, we can have one more system called oil AP, one more system called oil AP, wherein we will load all our historical data. We will analyze it. That's what he has suggested first during 1990s, 80s itself. He has suggested he has published international journal papers. Okay. From that only, they have created data warehouse. See, his suggestion is top-down approach. See, what is top-down approach, right? So first, we will we will create. See, this is what our OLTP. OLTP. From the OLTP, we will take the data and into a OLAP system. That's what OLAP is nothing but our data warehouse. We will load the data into data warehouse. Even data warehouse, different layers will be there. That I will explain later. Data warehouse. From the warehouse, we will move the data to data mart. Okay. After creating the data warehouse completely, then based on the subject, you are creating the data mart and then you are loading the data in this data warehouse to data, data mart. This process we will call it as top down approach. This is a data modeling. Okay. Data modeler will do it. Our data architect team or data modeling team, they will do it. They will take the data from source. Okay, then they will load, load it. This is one one time automation automation process. See, Informatica is fully completely automated. Okay, we will schedule it. After developing it, we will schedule it. So once it has been scheduled, the data will be moved from source system to target system. Okay, this is what it will be moved. Here the data mart will be there. This is what the data will be moved. Clear? Once after creating the data warehouse, if you create data mart, that will be called as top-down approach. After 10 years, Ralph Kimball has come up. Okay, so it is taking a lot of time to create the data warehouse. It is taking a lot of time. By the time, so what we can do, here we are the source system. Based on the subject, you create different, different data mart. Okay, initially we will create a different, different data mart. Load the data into a data mart directly. Say for an example, I want to have the reports for merchant. I will create a merchant data mart. Only whatever the data I needed to have this merchant, I can take it from here, from, from this source, and then I will load it into this data mart. Okay. So it will have only merchant related data. So here customer related data, supplier related data. That's what we can load it. It's one particular subject area. After that, if you need, you can move the data to data barrows. So this process we will call it as bottom up approach, bottom up approach. Okay. In this process, there is some here also some advantage, disadvantage. 
So based on the company's need, either they will go for top down approach or bottom up approach. Okay. It's a data modeling team. They will decide it or they will go for hybrid approach. So what is hybrid approach? OLTP to data mart, data mart to data warehouse, data warehouse to again data, data mart. Okay. So this process you will call it as hybrid approach. So this is what we will do it in our real time projects. Okay. Who will do it? Data modeling team will do it. They will do it. All the tables, data modeling and everything. As a ETL developer, we have to load the data into this particular model. So if I'm doing one business, okay, if I'm canceling a product, how many tables, how many tables it should affect? Okay. So what are the different data I have to capture? So that will be decided by the data modeling team. As a ETL team, we have to take the data from source. We have to load it into the data warehouse based on the business needs. This is what we will do. It. Okay, the inbound model, as I have mentioned, this is our source system. So our heterogeneous source system, we will do ETL process, load the data into a data warehouse. See here directly we are loading, but in our real time, it will be there multiple stages. Okay. Stage by stage data will be moved to the data warehouse. We'll be doing a lot of ETL logic and then the data will be moved to data warehouse. So once the data has been moved into data warehouse, then again, it will be moved on the data mart. So data mart is nothing but subset of our data warehouse. Okay, how we have in our system, so one TB hard disk, we are splitting the one TB into C drive, E drive, F drive, right? The logical division, the same way here also, we have the logical division of the data warehouse is called data mart. So in real time project, if you are working for one particular data mart, so merchant data mart, customer data mart, supplier data mart, okay, different, different data mart will be there. If you are the Tableau developer or Power BI developer or any other developer, report developer, so definitely you'll be having this particular data mart alone access. Okay, you'll be having access to this particular data mart. So other data mart, you need any access to this table, you have to get the approval from the customer. Okay, from the customer and then you have to inform to the DBA. DBA will provide you the access. Okay, this is what in real time you will have access and privileges. Okay. So top down approach, bottom up approach. First, we will load the data into data mart. Here also we can take from here. Here also we can take data can be, uh, so you, you can take the data from this data mart or consolidated data will be available in data warehouse. Here also we can take it for reporting. So anywhere you can take, so this is what the bottom up approach. Okay. This is what the bottom up approach. So we are splitting the data into a data mark based on business. Okay. Based on business, not for the, uh, not with any schema. So I told, right, it's a merchant data mark. So merchant related data will be loaded into a merchant data mark. Okay. Merchant related data into a merchant data mark. Then customer related, see you, you are working for customer reports then customer related data will be moved to customer reports. See, data mart is nothing but again, it's a subset of our data warehouse only. It's a logical division. It's a logical division, okay? These are all the logical division. We have logically, it has been splitted, but it's a single physical hardware only. Okay, now we have, this is what next one is like, uh, we have next one, we have data mart and data warehouse and top down bottom up approach. So what is the difference between top down and bottom up approach? We have in one model, it's a top down approach, Kimball model, it's a bottom up approach. It's a more time consuming. Okay. If you, to build the data warehouse it will consume more time and the maintenance is very easy. Maintenance and subsequent uh, project development cost is lower, but initial cost is very higher. Okay. So, so first we have to build data warehouse, then we have to take the data mart. It's a longer startup time. Okay. It's for enterprise wide. It's for entire enterprise wide. We'll go for the data warehouse. So this is what individual business area. So one business area we will go for, I told rights, one subject like merchant, customer, supplier, right? So all these are Kimball model. So it takes lesser time. You can create a data mart quickly and then you can take the data. But after that, it will take some low initial cost, but after that, the maintenance will be high. Okay. This is what the difference between 
the inbound model and Kimball model. Now we have both, both model. Okay, so hybrid model. So from source, do the ETL, load it into a data mart. So from the data mart, it will be loaded into the data warehouse. Okay, then it will be moved to the data mart again. Again, data mart. So from here also, you can take the data by the user. From here also, you can take the data from the user. Okay, this is what it will be hybrid approach. So who will do all this in real time? So we are as a ETL developer, we are not going to do data modeling team. They will do it. Okay, data modeling team. Some separate teams will be there. So we do have two different tables in Informatica. That's what data warehouse. So this table is very, very important. So whenever you are going for enterprise data warehouse, so definitely you are looking for only two types of table. Either it should be a dimension table or it should be a fact table. So what is dimension fact table? If you go to the data warehouse, right? Data warehouse, I want to build a report. So how we will load the data? Say for an example, if I have employees data, I will load all my employees data in the employees table. Okay, all my customers data loaded into the customer table, customer data. So all the customer ID and customer's data, employee ID, employee data, product information and location information. See, all this information will be loaded into a different, different tables. So these are all date table, okay, location, uh, store table, different store. So why we are loading all the data into a different, different table, right? At the end of the day, I want to know what is the store-wise sales, what is the product-wise sales, what is the customer-wise sales, regional-wise, country-wise, right? Different, different dimensions. I want to analyze the data. Then I'm loading all the dimensions into different, different tables. Then I will be having a fact table. You'll be having a centralized fact table here. It will have all the transactional data. Okay, whenever we are doing the business, so first we are capturing, okay, this, this customer purchased this particular product, okay, on this particular date, okay, the, from this particular, uh, from this particular employee, from this particular store, particular region, particular country, see all this particular store, everything I will capture. So this many product he has purchased, one product cost is this much and total price is this much. So each and every transaction will have the data. So this data we will call it as fact table. This is the fact table. Okay, it's the centralized fact table. Fact table will have the transactional data. So always fact table will have transactional data. All the keys from this table will be connected. The key values from this table. So this is foreign key primary key relationship. So you can watch my SQL session. So today I will tell you how to install the software and how to practice our SQL. That I will tell you. So please start working on it. So this is the fact table. This is the dimension table. So all these are dimension table. Dimension table will have always a primary key. Okay, remember, dimension table will have a primary key and fact table will have a foreign key. Okay, fact FF. You remember, fact table will have a foreign key. So what is the foreign key? These are all the foreign key. Then measurable values. These are all the measurable values, right? So measures will be having it non-measurable attributes and primary key. So what is primary key? So I will tell you now. So this is the data model we will create. So who will load this table? As a ETL developer, we have to load it. Okay, as a ETL developer, we have to load it. So how to do it? So I will tell you how these tables are related. If you look at here, whenever we are doing the uh, transactions in our real time, okay, whenever we do the transaction in our real time, if you look at here, I want to start a company so that I will have all the reports. So how we will have the reports in our real time, right? So I will load all the product related table in the product related details in the product table. So each and every product which is available in my company will have a product ID, separate product ID, okay? Each and every product will have separate product ID, product descriptions, all the related to product description. This is called primary key. This is called different dimensions, okay? attributes, attributes of the particular dimension table. If you look at here, dimension table will have a primary key and attributes. The primary key here, it will not accept any duplicate value. I cannot give for this, any other product, I cannot give the same number, okay? Without primary key, without this key, I will not have the product name and everything. So primary key should be there. 
So separate key should be there. If you are going for any company, you'll be having a separate employee key, right? Employee ID. The same way, each and every product will have the product ID. Each and every customer will have the customer ID. Okay. So every customer has been loaded into the table. We'll have the primary key. The same way, employees table, accounts table, all this table, we'll have it. Okay. I will have all the tables. The store table, locations table. This is what the dimension table. See, whatever the dimension needed for our data model, I will load all the dimension table. So from where this dimension table will be loaded? From source only, from OLTP to OLAP we will load. But while loading the OLAP, we will maintain the history. That I will tell you how to do it. But we will get the data from OLTP only. Okay, OLTP also they will maintain. That is what ER model, entity relationship model, we will, show, we will use in our OLTP system. Okay, so now we have the fact table. So if you are going for a particular store, right? You are doing any business, like you are purchasing a particular product, then you are you are giving that product to the particular person in employee. So they will be maintaining that, they will be reading the barcode of the particular product and then all these details will be captured. So what are the details? When you are purchasing, what is the date? Okay, which product you are purchasing? What is your customer ID? They will take your customer ID card, okay? Or the number, mobile number, which employee? is helping you to purchase the product okay and store id which store you are purchasing a product which regions so all this will be captured in this fact table sales table see these are all foreign key so why i am capturing so whenever i'm going for the transaction i will capture that and quantity so how many quantity so two quantity has purchased unit price and the total price okay so one unit price is 3500 two unit price 7,000, all this will be captured. For an example, your customer is saying that, okay, at the end of the day, how much we have uh, today's sales. So what will you do? You will go for sum of total price, sum of total price, date key equal to today's system date you will take. And I want to know in today's date, how much is the sales for each store? So group, so here we have to make date key equal to today's date and group by store ID, we have to make the sum of total price. This is what we will maintain in our reports. Okay, this is what we will take. But I do not know which store, right? So 7667, which is, which is a store? Then I have to join this table. This store ID, fact sales store ID to diamonds and table store ID, I will join it. I will get, okay, so Mumbai Kalyan store. This is what, so Kalyan region store. We have the sales. So highest sales. So that I will take it from here. But I have to make the summation. So which product is, which store is, which region is. So everything. So this is what in our, in our real-time environment, we will be keeping that fact table and dimension table. How these tables are related? Like a star schema, snowflake schema. The schema. The star schema is nothing but, we have the star schema is nothing but, like we have like a star. This is the fact table. So you'll be having a centralized fact table. This is a sales table. You assume that this is a sales table. This is the dimension table. If you look at here, this is a dimension table. We are the city table. So city ID, city description, all other remaining columns also will be there. Employee table, country table, products table. See all these four tables are dimension table. This is the fact table. This is the fact table. So in this particular country, this particular city, this particular employee purchased this particular product. So two quantity he has purchased, one quantity, sorry, one unit price is $200. Okay, so he has purchased two quantity and $400. That's what it will be maintained. So from source only we are taking the data. From source only we are taking the data, but we will maintain in the fact table in our OLAP side. Okay, see if, in fact table, the outer tables are dimension table. The dimension tables are connected with centralized fact table to get a meaningful report. To get a meaningful report. This is what the star schema. Now we have the snowflake schema. See in the star schema, which table we have to load first? So primary key table should be loaded first. So it's a master table, reference table. Okay, always we will maintain all the primary key. But remember, this dimension table will not change frequently. So do I need to load all the country data every now and then? No, right? 
see one time the country data will be loaded so always the country data is same if you are going to uh, operate new business in new country that time i will maintain one more country ID. Uh, otherwise we will be having the same country this dimension table will not change frequently that's what it's a slowly changing dimension okay slowly changing dimension product table also so product table so we will have new products but very slowly it will be changing but fact table is having huge volume of data okay this is star schema in star schema we have to load dimension table first then centralized fact table clear so this is one of the interview question they will ask so how the dimension modeling they are maintaining in your project so which table you will load first okay that's what we will ask they will ask questions okay so now we will have snowflake schema so snowflake is different one snowflake technology is different that is data lake i have yesterday i have explained snowflake schema is different okay snowflake schema is in data warehouse environment in our data warehouse environment snowflake schema is nothing but okay the snowflake schema if you have this is one dimension table right this is one dimension table this one dimension table we are splitting this dimension into multiple dimension table look at here this dimension table we are splitting into multiple dimension table so instead of having all the data in the single dimension single locations table okay we are having the data into the another table okay store id store name store territory information before that we have handled here okay after that we have moved this data to another table okay we will maintain the store territory details in another table called territory whenever needed whenever store territory needed i will have this id okay with this id and then i will maintain this i will take this report from where this particular store is located whenever needed i will go for store name yes i will go for store name with the store id whenever i need the store territory then i will join this table i will get it okay so this is a primary key table this is a primary key table that is a dimension table this is also a dimension table see one dimension table refers another dimension table based on the normalization this is called normalization what is normalization so normalize why we are going for normalization see normalization we are going for normalization to avoid the data redundancy see in real time oil ap tables are denormalized okay denormalized in entity relationship model in oil oil tp side we will oil tp side is a normalized table oil ap side it's a denormalized one okay our data warehouse is denormalized so denormalized is nothing but this is what a denormalized but here snowflake again we will normalize it so what is normalization to avoid the data duplicate data redundancy repeatness we are going for the normalization look at here say i am keeping my employees details here i have the employee id i have all this id column right so i have the employee id first name last name everything i have here right so this one i have so here i have the employee id okay so here i have first name last name all this i have so i have these details are from office address billing address poc and everything is nothing but our office location so you have three different office location you assume that you have the three different office location you have one lakh employees okay if you are keeping your employee details and office details in a single table what will happen so every time you are repeating the same addresses office address three office addresses to all the employees correct if you have one lakh employees the three office addresses are repeating for one lakh times here instead what we are thinking maintain this office address separately okay maintain this office address separately like this only three office address right three different office addresses three different times you will make so in office address table address id will be the primary key okay in employee table employee id is the primary key so this should be a foreign foreign key okay this employee located in office number 2 3 1 like this you can have it right like this you can have it so how many times i maintain now now only three times so this is what i can reduce the data redundancy clear this is what i can reduce the data redundancy so this is called one dimension table i am splitting that dimension table into multiple tables 
this is called normalization first normal second normal third normal right so this is their normal form this is what we are maintaining so why to avoid the data redundancy right so this is what we will go for the data redundancy and everything see one dimension table splitting the dimension table into another dimension table so here if you look at here here you will be having the primary key here store id will be a primary key right store id will be a primary key and same dimension table will have a foreign key if the dimension table is there in foreign key in our real time that's there in the snowflake schema okay here it is a primary key here it is a primary key so what is primary key foreign key so that you have to learn from oracle only from sql only okay so what is the two different data warehouse and data lake data warehouse is nothing but the structured data only will be handled and the data will be processed okay processed data will be loaded into the data warehouse in data lake the other structured semi structured unstructured data will be handled raw data will be loaded into the data lake from there it will be processed scheme that's what schema and write schema and read raw data will be loaded after that we will read the data from that storage here we will we will have commodity hardware low cost storage here it is expensive cost is expensive that's what we are moving towards on the data lake side in data warehouse mostly the business people will use it business analyst okay product owner all the business people will use it. in data lake environment all the ai and ml data scientist they will use it so if i want to use uh, ai and ml concept here so we will use it in data warehouse side okay this is what the data warehouse and data lake side we will use agile is nothing but so less agile fixed configuration highly agile con configure and reconfigure as needed right see agility is nothing but you are splitting that entire work into a small small work okay small small work and then you are you are doing parallelly you are doing parallelly okay so all the work you are doing parallelly so agility in the data warehousing environment you can do very less okay but here in data lake environment we can go for high agility so agile process we have right so we will be we will be loading the data and there is no need of for testing very less testing is enough and no there is no failover there is no support team much uh, needed support team there is no much uh, support team in our agility and all so we will develop the code we will put it in the production server and then it will be running so if any production issues are happening the developer itself will take care it's again depends on the team only but i am telling so agility is nothing but in most of the areas we are implementing the agility in our data lake environment is is gisi but in data warehouse environment is less such agility only running a deployment in sequence okay splitting the modules into small small modules and then we are having a separate separate team okay that is possible in data lake environment okay this is what agility if you are going for real time project so definitely these data warehousing roles will be there okay business users so business users is nothing but your product owner okay your application owner your business owner or your business analyst data analyst somebody else who knows the business they are going to give business use cases they require one to us okay so their business users they are telling that okay I, we need to create a report in this format in this way we need to have a report the data is there in source okay do a etl pipeline load the data into a data warehouse and take the reports from there that's what the business analyst will analyze it they will they will give the information okay this kind of reports i need for this kind of report so these tables should be loaded from the source that's what they will tell you so what the report writers will tell okay report writers will create a data model that the data primary key foreign key relationship and everything they will say like okay if i want to create the report like this i need to have the tables in data warehouse okay i need to have the data in the data warehouse these are all the data should be there so report writers then our etl developers okay i will take the data from source i will take the data from source i will load it into a data warehouse here 
based on the data model. The data model will be created by data modeling team. So if it is a new business, definitely data modeling team, they will suggest us, okay, go for this particular data model. You load it into this table. They will give us the data model. We are going to load it. Report writers, they will take the data from here to a report and then they will be creating a report. DBAs, DBA will maintain the database. Okay, database, database environment. Okay, here, all this database, this OLTP, OLAP, everybody is taking. In addition to this, we'll be having a report admin, Tableau admin, Power BI admin, Informatic admin. Okay, everything admin will be there. And we'll be having a testing team also. Report testing, ETL testing team will be there. Okay, data modeler. So they'll be using, you heard about this Erwin, right? Erwin, Erwin data modeling tool. So this tool they will use, Erwin tool for the data modeling. We do have some different data model. I will explain that, that's what they will use it. Okay, this is what the different roles. And if you go to this uh, in real time, these are all the popular ETL tools are available in the real time project. So you'll be having Informatica Power Center. So Informatica is a company name, Power Center is a ETL tool, okay? Informatica is a company name. We have Informatica IDQ. Informatica Data Quality, MDM, okay, Master Data Management, Informatica BDM, Big Data Management, Informatica ACS, Informatica Intelligent Cloud Services. So different tools are there. Power Exchange, Address Doctor, lot of tools are there. So by using this Informatica Power Center, we can do the ETL process. Same way, competitors of Informatica is nothing but all our remaining tools are competitors like IBM Data Stage and Microsoft SSIS, SQL Server, integration service. So SAP BODS, business object data services, IBM Cognos data manager. Cognos is the reporting tool. Cognos data manager is the ETL tool. Oracle data integration is the ODA, is the ETL tool. SAS data integration studio, Oracle warehouse builder, Abinitio, Talent, Apache Nifi, Pentaho, Explanty. So Explanty is cloud-based ETL tool. See, these are all the ETL tool. If you know any one of the ETL tool, so learning other ETL tool is very easy. The same concept you will use. Even if you are going for cloud big data or any cloud uh, uh, data load, right? ETL pipeline, same pipeline only we will use. Instead of this database, we'll be having a data, data lake environment. That's all. The connection and everything will be different. But loading process is same, okay? If you are approaching Oracle, Oracle for the entire data, data process in your company, they will say, go for Oracle as the OLTP. Okay, Oracle as the OLTP, Oracle warehouse, and then use ODA. Okay, Oracle data integrator as the ETL tool. And here use OBA. See, OBA is nothing but Oracle business intelligence. So this tool, you can use it for the reporting that they will tell. If you are going for Microsoft SQL Server, they will use SQL Server's database and data warehouse. Use SSIS is the ETL tool and then use Power BI as the reporting tool. Same way, IBM. So you can go for NTSA for data warehouse. Okay, IBM DB2 for source system. So then you will be having a data stage for ETL. So they will say all the related to IBM product. Owner. So that's what See, the companies will choose which tool they need to go for. So out of all the tools, Informatica is leading ETL tool. It will handle huge volume of data, support and failover mechanism and everything will be very high here, okay? Fault tolerance, everything will be high. So same way reporting tool, you have Tableau, you have Power BI, you have ClickView or ClickSense, Cognos, SAP Bivo, okay? Business object, Zoom data, and Google Looker, we have SSRS, SQL Server Reporting Service, Oracle Business Intelligence, Spotfire, MicroStrategy, uh, Quick Insight. See, all these are reporting tools. See, we need to know at least what are the different reporting tools are there. Why? Because if you are going for ETL developer environment, you will be working with these departments, uh, two teams only. Okay? You will be giving the data for Tableau team only. So if they are finding any discrepancy on the data, so they will be contacting the ETL team only, okay? So this is what enterprise data teams will be there. 
So I will show you the data model. If you look at here. So what is uh, conceptual, log logical, physical data model? Who will create this? So normally, this will be created, maintained by data modeling team. Normally, the Erwin, Erwin tool they are maintaining, right? So first of all, how they will maintain? This is just, just uh, give you an overall idea. Just I will give you an overall idea. So first, they will go for conceptual data model. See, what is the conceptual data model? So they will take like a pen and paper and then they will have, okay, in order to create a data model for the particular company, so I'll be going like this, product table, store table, sales table, time table. See all this, how it is related to a fact table here. See, includes the important entities. Entities is nothing but table. And the relationship, how we are relating with each other. No attribute is specified. Attribute means the column names. No primary key, foreign key is specified here. Okay, just the conceptual design model. They will maintain all the how many tables are needed for this data model, okay, finance data model, and then sales data model. So different, different merchant data model, something for that we, how many tables are needed that we will maintain it first conceptual data model. Okay, it's very highly abstract and you can easily understand. So we will not have any uh, software tool to create a conceptual model, just a pen and paper is enough, okay. And then we will go for the logical model. In the logical model, if you look at here, all the tables, we will maintain the column names. Okay, in time, what are the columns should be maintained? In product table, what are the columns to be maintained? In sales table, what are the columns should be maintained? And what is the primary key foreign key? So here, store ID is the foreign key. From where it is coming? From here it is coming. Store ID is the primary key. Product ID is the foreign key. It's coming from this table. Date key. Then after that, you are maintaining two columns. Okay. So normalization occurs at this level. Normalization means we are, we can split this table into two tables also. Okay. So that's what your logical model. So we are maintaining a logical level. Then after that, we'll go in for the physical data model. What is physical data model? See, after creating like this, we will maintain each and every column. We will maintain the length. See, what is the data type? What is the length? what is the uh, all the models we will maintain and then by using the urban tool we will create the model right after that no need to create by ourselves create table table name all this so if you go to the urban model if you are saying that create all the tables it will create at one stretch in the back end no need to create manually see all the relation relationship which table should be loaded first sorry which table to be created first Okay, that will automatically create it based on the primary key foreign key relationship. We are not going to create. If you are creating, first of all, we have to create primary key tables, then only foreign key tables, right? If you are trying to create foreign key table first, we will get the error. Why? Because this is we are we are having this foreign key here. So that cannot be created. But Erwin tool will create automatically based on that. Clear? So data type and the data column column name and everything is based on the database we'll be creating here. This is called physical data model. So who will do all this by using the Erwin tool or power designer, the data model team will create it. Data modeling team. Just to give you an idea, I have explained this. See, OLAP we know already. This is also one of the interview questions they will ask. See, OLAP Q is nothing but multi-dimensional data. Okay. If you look at here, multi-dimensional data. So OLAP, what is nothing but based on the multi-dimensional data model. So enables a user to easily and selectively extract and view the data from different point of use. So decision making the business process. Okay. See, it's nothing but cube is for our reference only. Okay. So this cube, we can see this in different view, right? So top view, side view, front view, all the view, right? the rear view and everything, bottom view, everything. So one cube we are seeing in different way. Okay, product, supplier, category and everything. So look at here. See, we are going to have this table model in this particular cube. See category, we are having the three categories. So this is one category. Confections like this will be having this categories, category dimension. Okay, beverages. 
So all this we are maintaining in the category dimension. Okay. If I want to analyze in this category of data, so from this dimension, you will analyze it. We'll go for one more dimensions. Okay, here. This is like confections. So this one, another dimension. This is another dimension. This data will be showing only for confection data. So now you can go for. See, this is one one dimensions. Each and each and everything is each and every dimension in the cube. Okay. So now you can see this. This one we have seen, but now if you look at here, this is like time dimension. January, February, March, April. So this is category dimension. So each category we have one, two, three. Same way here we have the time dimension. January, February, March, April like this, right? Or Q wise. So Q wise everything will be there. The same way we'll be having a measures in stock, on order, sales amount, sales cost. These are all the measurable values that we are that we are seeing in different dimensions. So if I'm showing one value here, this is for one category for one particular one particular month for one particular sales amount, one particular measure, right? Multiple dimensions are related. So you can see data in multiple dimension way. This is called a dimensional modeling, OLAP cube. Okay. If you look at here, I'm showing this way. So this is the data. Say for an example, I want to know the January data. So what will you do? So I have to sum up all this, right? For January, February, I have to sum up all this. March, sum up. Okay, so here I want to go for one particular category. Then I have to go like this, one particular category. Okay, this is what I will be analyzing the data in different, different dimensions. Okay, the same way here, I have the book category, the product category, quarters, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and territory. Okay, so we have different territory. So if you are showing some value, how it will be, like you'll be having the different operations like four operations these are all the questions they will be asking in interview what is roll up drill down slice and dice pivot operations everything okay so roll up is nothing but summarize the data so you have the q1 q2 q3 and q4 if i'm asking the year wise data you will be summing up all the q right that's what roll up drill down means you have the q1 data so q1 i want to go for month wise so you are drilling down Q into month, month into week, week into day. That's called drill down. Okay. Slice and dice. Instead of having all the dimensional data, we are taking slice one slice and dice from that. So pivot operation is con converting rows into columns. If you look at here, roll up operation is nothing, but roll up is nothing, but you are summing up. Okay. We have the data like this. See, you have the data product table. You have the PC, book, shoe, and clothes. All the data you are seeing only for Q1. Okay, Q1. Q1, this what? PC. And this is for one particular locations. This is for New Jersey, Los Angeles, and this is for Australia regions. Okay. These two are US, these two are Australia. So now we are split, we are summing up. See, this New Jersey and Los Angeles, we are summing up as 2000. Okay. This is called roll up and this Perth and then Sydney, we are rolling up. Okay. For this one, see 395, 6, 605. That's a thousand. We are seeing here, right? So that's called Australia region data. So this is called roll up. So you can roll up here also. So Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, you can roll up to a year level data. Year, yearly sales. So roll up on location, roll up on time. Roll up on category so that we got, we can do it. Are you clear what is roll up? So roll up is nothing but summing up. Drill down. Drill down is nothing but again, here we are the Q1, right? 605. That Q1, we are splitting into January, February, March. So 605. So everything will be maintained like a table level. So in the table level data, like a, on date level, they will be maintained. So we are splitting the table into monthly, quarterly, yearly, weekly, all this we will be taking. So if you are summing up this 150, 100 and 150, it will become 400. So what is that 400? So we used to have the 400 here, right? This 400 for 
clothes clothes for q1 400 this is what we will be having it okay clear on this what is drill down okay slice slice is nothing but one dimension we are taking so out of all this right we are taking only one new jersey los angels birth and sydney we are taking for pc and category only so this and all we are not taking only one we are taking okay 605 this and all only one dimension we are taking okay slice and dice dice means this is what dice same like dice we have right we are taking one particular dice here okay sydney and perth for q1 q2 for this two categories we are taking large cube into small cube the pivot operations for summing up some values okay we are going for the pivot operations like we are splitting the rows into columns columns into rows for different uh, analysis so this is what the different uh, roll up and uh, cube and all so we have the whole app is nothing but types of whole app see we have the roll app whole app whole app and others okay roll up is nothing but relational whole app. relational database management system olap that's what we have multi-dimensional roll up so normally it will be multi-dimensional roll up only hybrid see other roll up so these are all something like data modeling team they will take care we are not going to do but you have to understand what is this they will ask so do you know what is roll up something and all okay so just you can tell them what is this this is what the roll up cube and everything 